All right, we're going to do a little Social Studies 8, Unit 3 review. You have your test coming up, and you need to know what you need to study. So I'm going to run through everything that you need to study uh, to do well on this test. This test is on imperialism and World War I. So for the imperialism uh, section, you got to remember that the U.S. bought Alaska from Russia. It was a Russian possession, and the United States purchased it. It was initially called uh, Seward's Folly, but later... With the discover of oil and gold, uh, became very lucrative for the United States. You got to remember about Hawaii, it was annexed, it wasn't bought, and it was American sugar planters that lived in Hawaii that, that wanted the United States to annex Hawaii. Uh, the open door policy, the goal was to protect U.S. trading rights. We're talking specifically about China. We want to be able to ch uh, trade with China. And in China, uh, the European powers, the Western powers, had been setting up what's called spheres of influence, which were areas of China that were dedicated to trading with one specific country. The United States didn't like that. They wanted to be able to uh, trade with China without having to go through other European countries. Uh, yellow journalism uh, comes into play here. That's that sensational, biased, and often false news reporting. You need to know that what yellow journalism is. Uh, and yellow journalism comes to play with the Spanish-American War. Uh, remember, we had the USS Maine that was sent uh, to Cuba to protect American interests. Uh, it was sunk by an explosion. Uh, yellow journalism, uh, the newspapers uh, proclaimed that it was the work of Spain. It led to us uh, declaring war on Spain. Uh, the Cuban Rebellion was also part of the Spanish-American War. And in that time period, we got really involved in Latin America. Uh, we built the Panama Canal that was designed to shorten the sea route between the Atlantic and the Pacific Coast. No longer did you have to go all the way around the tip of South America in order to get from the Atlantic side to the Pacific side. And the idea of imperialism, acquir acquiring overseas territory, building an empire, big countries taking over little countries. Eventually, imperialism will lead us into World War I. Uh, the big stick diplomacy, Teddy Roosevelt's policy, speak softly, carry a big stick. I'm going to try and talk out my issues, but uh, if talking doesn't resolve our issues, I'm not afraid to call in the military. Uh, the Roosevelt Corollary and the Monroe Doctrine, which dealt with uh, the United States and our influence in Latin America and not liking European powers, uh, getting involved in Latin America. You need to remember that. Uh, and then the transition from imperialism to uh, World War I. Imperialism was one of the causes of World War I, mainly because it created conflict between nations over colonies. Uh, England, France, uh, Spain, Germany, Austria, Hungary were all competing over colonies that they were uh, taking over in Asia and the Pacific. Uh, you need to know militarism, which is the building up of military forces. Armies were getting uh, larger than ever. Uh, fighting increased rapidly from a small local conflict in Europe to a world war because these powerful nations had built these massive armies, uh, and they all had alliances. Serbia uh, is sort of responsible for the assassination of the Archduke Franz Ferdinand as a Serbian nationalist. Uh, Austria... Uh, Hungary uh, attacks Serbia, Serbia's ally Russia then attacks Austria-Hungary. Germany, who is Austria-Hungary's uh, ally, attacks Russia. And next thing you know, all of Europe is in a world war. But the spark, the spark was the assassination of the Archduke of Austria-Hungary, Franz Ferdinand. The main causes of World War I, militarism, alliances, imperialism, and nationalism, which is an extreme love for your own country. They all believed that their country was the best and they were going to win the war. It was called a world war because many nations joined the allies uh, against the central powers, and the fighting took place in many different nations. Remember, we had the Western Front over in France, miles and miles of trenches, and then the Eastern Front, uh, Germany versus Russia. Uh, for World War I, you always think about World War I being with trenches. Trench warfare uh, becomes very, very popular during the war. Uh, the Western Front in World War I it was where uh, both sides, the Germans uh, and the French and the Allies, uh, fought over very small amounts of land, 
often with huge casualties. New weapons, new technology cause casualties to be far higher and war to become more defensive. Uh, new technology included machine guns, airplanes, poison gas, the flamethrower. All of these new technologies led this war to be the deadliest in history up until that point. Uh, the convoy system was designed to get troops safely across the Atlantic. Ships would uh, sail together in order to try and avoid uh, German U-boat attacks. The United States entered World War I mainly because Germany uh, is practicing unrestricted submarine warfare and Americans are dying on American ships and that really angers the United States and forces them to, to join the war on the side of the Allies. Um, you need to know this order of events in World War I. The first thing that happens is the Archduke, Franz Ferdinand, is assassinated. After that, that's when World War I begins. As World War I begins, Germany begins practicing unrestricted submarine warfare. One of the ships they sink is the British passenger liner, the Lusitania. And after the Lusitania, after the Zimmermann telegram, the United States declares war on Germany. So you need to know that those things happen in that order. Like I said before, the Zimmerman telegram, Germany tries to convince Mexico to join the war and to attack the United States. Um, over in Russia, the Bolsheviks seize power in the government led by Vladimir Lenin. After the Bolsheviks seize power, Russia actually makes peace with Germany. That eliminates the Eastern Front, and Germany is now able to focus all of their troops on the Western Front. This should be a real advantage for Germany, but at the same time, the United States is now joining the war and provides the, uh, the over-the-top uh, help that, uh, that the Allies need in order to defeat Germany. Uh, back at home in the United States, we have the Selective Service Act, which said that all young men between the ages of 21 and 30 need to register for the draft. Women helped the war effort by working in factories. Women got more, uh, had more job opportunities during the war since the men were, uh, a lot of the men were overseas fighting. The United States creates the War Industry Boards. Uh, board and the War Industry Board kind of oversees factories and makes sure that they are producing enough military supplies, airplanes, tanks, ammunition, uh, machine guns, things like that. During World War I, the United States government controlled food and factory production. Remember, they encouraged people to, to grow victory gardens in order to save food. We had meatless Mondays and wheatless Wednesdays. Uh, a lot of posters were created during this time, encouraged Americans to support the war. We call these posters that are designed to uh, convince people of a particular viewpoint. We call that propaganda. Uh, you need to know President Wilson's uh, plan for peace was called the 14 Points. 14 plan Points was a plan to prevent future wars. This was supposed to be the war to end all wars. Um, we get into uh, colonies... Uh, having a right to decide how they should be governed. This is called the idea of self-determination. And we see this uh, after World War I when we discuss what should happen with Austria-Hungary and how it should be broken up. Uh, Woodrow Wilson, President of the United States, in his 14 points proposes the establishment of the League of Nations. Uh, the League of Nations is a sort of international peacekeeping body that would try and preserve world peace. It would try to deal with issues locally before they erupted in a world war like we had last time. Uh, the United States Senate opposed the United States signing uh, the treaty or joining the League of Nations because they thought that it would involve the United States in foreign uh, conflicts. And they had just gotten through uh, our entry into World War I uh, they didn't like that. We Really, we didn't have anything to do with this war, and we kind of got sucked into it ourselves. Uh, the Treaty of Versailles is, Versailles is the treaty that ends the war, and the other European powers aren't as much worried about preserving world peace as they want to punish Germany. They force Germany to cut the size of their military. They force Germany to pay huge, huge war reparations, huge amounts of money, to the Allies to say they're sorry for the war. This really just angers Germany and pushes, pushes us really closer to another world war. The United States is actually the only, the only country 
that uh, does not sign the Treaty of Versailles. The Senate wouldn't allow it. Uh, this notice, uh, we looked at it earlier. It said, notice, uh, travelers intending to embark on the Atlantic voyage are reminded that a state of war exists between Germany and her allies and Great Britain and her allies, that the zone of war includes the waters adjacent to the British Isles, and that in accordance with formal notice given by the imperial, imperial, imperial German government, Vessels flying the flag of Great Britain or any of her allies are liable to destruction in those waters, and that travelers sailing in the war zone on ships of Great Britain or her allies do so at their own risk. This was a notice that was published in the United States warning uh, passengers that were about to embark on the uh, Lusitania that the Lusitania was... Uh, potentially entering waters in which German U-boats could unleash torpedoes. Uh, and that's exactly what ended up happening. This was a notice given to Americans who were planning to sail on the Lusitania. Uh, this is a British tank. Remember, tanks were one of the new technologies uh, introduced at, uh, into World War I, along with machine guns, airplanes, poison gas, gas masks, flamethrowers, things like that. Uh, this cartoon here, uh, while it does kind of look like the Lusitania, the ship is actually labeled U.S. Patience, and there's a periscope, if you can see right here, there's a periscope popping up, staring at the ship that's sinking. Um, the periscope, of course, represents the German U-boats, Germany in the war, but the ship actually represents how patient the United States had been uh, while Germany was practicing unrestricted submarine warfare. Many of our ships were taken down and many Americans died. And this kind of represents, with the Lusitania sinking, it represents that the United States has finally had enough and they're going to enter the war and Germany should watch out because we're coming for them. So if you pay attention to this video, go back, watch it a few times, review these key concepts, and you will uh, be guaranteed to do well on the test that's coming up. Once again, this is the Social Studies 8 Unit 3 Review on Imperialism and World War One.